Hello everyone. And this is a very simple tutorial on how to create ISO lines in Houdini. So this is essentially the effect that we are going for. It's a little slow. Like this is not, it's, it's not like a real time effect. It takes a little bit of time to calculate overall. Uh, the idea for this came from Tron Legacy, like which came out in 2010, I think. So in 2010, they, uh, one of the designers who had worked on Tron Legacy uh, by the name of JT Nimoy, who uh, he had released this article or he had published this article on the work that he had done on it. And he did a lot of work on the, the UI design for Tron Legacy. And he used, uh, he essentially worked a lot in processing, which is a programming language for graphics. And this is the stuff that sort of fascinated me because they were generating these ISO lines based on what looks like a noise map. And I could never really figure out how they did it. But this stuff is purely code. Like he actually shows you like this is the interface for it. So he was doing a lot of it through coding. And I never really, like back then I was just starting to learn Houdini. So I never really figured out how to do it. And a few days back, I finally managed to figure it out. So I said, okay, you know, might as well make a tutorial on that. All right, so uh, this is what we're going to make. And it's actually not very complicated. So the process is to generate a noise map and then delete the black parts of the noise map. And then whatever is left, we need to generate curves out of that. Okay, so we'll just start off with a simple sphere. And the first rule is that you need to have fairly dense geometry, like it's not going to work otherwise. So we're going to take this and give it about, say, uh, 70 segments. Okay, so it's fairly dense. Now, the one thing to remember is the heavier the geometry get, the smoother your result will be, but it'll also take longer to calculate. Okay, so you have to sort of find that balance. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to generate a noise map. So we're going to take an attribute op and we'll call it uh, noise map. And this is going to be fairly simple. So what, we, what we're going to do is we want to create like a looping uh, noise. So we'll take a turbulent noise and I'll connect the position and we'll just plug this in here. So this is what we have but I want a uh, original Perlin. So I have this and we just give it a little bit of frequency. So the first thing is like, you don't want very noisy lines, right? We want fairly smooth lines. So get the roughness down to almost zero. Okay. Like we don't really want too much roughness. Okay. The second thing is we want to create, uh, I want to create like bands. Like this is just, this will not generate enough curves. Okay. So we need like more of this. So what you do is just take a trigonometric function. And we will set this to sine and I'll just plug this into the radians and the trigonometric function comes out to color. Okay. So we want to do two things. Like firstly, if you want to animate this, we animate the offset value. So this will get promoted because okay, so we'll promote this parameter and the frequency uh, start off at somewhere around 30 or 40. So we'll take it about 40 and there you go. This is the noise map that you get. This is actually a very nice way to generate like some really interesting noise maps if you want. Like whatever you change this to, it looks pretty decent. You know, like you get alligator noise or sparse convolution. You get very interesting results with this. Okay, so we have this and then uh, we want to animate it. So just come into offset and we'll animate it using the time function. So we'll just take add time uh, into two. Okay, so it's just relatively fast. So if I press play, I should have this which looks pretty decent. The rest is fairly simple. So we'll, firstly, we want to delete out all the black parts. So we'll take a delete and I'm going to delete. Uh, yeah, we'll do delete selected by expression and I'll do uh, at CD dot R less than 0 0.5. So all the color that is less than 0 0.5 in value will get deleted. So you'll just have this left. So which is perfect. Now, the second thing we want is we just want the edges to be left and nothing in the center. So just take a divide node. And in the divide node, you get a very simple option, like turn off convex polygons and just switch on remove shared edges. So you'll just have, you know, nothing left in the middle. Like if you press W, you have most of it there already. See, there you go. Okay. 
we have lines. Now the rest of it is just doing a couple of fairly simple things. So the first thing is like in some cases, because these spheres are sort of growing and becoming, you know, bigger or smaller, like if you want them to go in the opposite direction, just do a negative over here. Like we can take the time and do a negative, you know, so they will sort of grow bigger. Okay. Like instead of becoming smaller. Okay. So like what we can do is in order to make sure that, uh, you know, shapes don't fall down too small, I can delete the really small stuff. Okay, so I can just take a measure and we'll measure the area of these shapes. Okay, so we'll measure area and then again take a delete and we'll do delete by expression and just to add area less than 0 0.01. So what will happen is that the ones that are too small will essentially just delete or let's try 0 0.02. No, sorry, 0. 005. Okay. So we have like smaller shapes still. Yeah. Okay. So this is good. Okay. Now what we want to do is we just want to smoothen out the shapes. Okay. So just take a smooth and we're just going to smoothen this out. So first thing you want to do is you want to turn off the constraint boundary. So make that none and there you go. And depending on how smooth you want it, we can just drop the filter quality down to one and just increase the smooth values. And that is good enough. The problem is it tends to be a little bit jerky. So you can actually just work with this, but if you want, we can do a little bit of resampling. Okay. So we can just take a resample. So we'll do like a couple of resamples, like one, we want to keep the point count like fairly low. Okay, keep it on subdivision curve. So it sort of generally follows the shape. Okay. And then take a second resample and just, you know, increase the density. So, keep this to subdivision curves as well and just make it like really small. So we get like, you know, fairly smooth points and yeah, it tends to get a little bit wavy, but that's fine. Like, you know, you get like a decent result. As I said, like you can stop here itself. Like this is fine as well. Like this isn't bad either, but if you feel like it needs to get a little more smoother or you want to, you know, get a little additional control, you can work with a little bit of resampling and that's basically it. Like, so then the rest of it is fairly simple because these are still polygons. So if you don't want the polygons to remain anymore, just take a carve and you know, just apply a carve. That's it. Okay. So then like the curve no longer has, you know, like the polygons are gone or you can just do a poly wire. Like that's okay as well. You know, just take like, even if you don't want to do a carve, you can just do a poly wire. And, you know, just keep it really small, turn off, uh, prevent joint buckling because it, if sometimes it can cause like really sharp spikes and you know, that's basically it. So as I said, like you can directly get it from smooth as well, which is fine. Or let's do one thing. Let's get it from this resample, uh, but we'll keep it relatively dense. So 0 0.02. Yeah, I think this is okay. And just remove the color. So we'll just take a delete or we'll just take a color node and give it some color. So I'll just take this and change it to a uh, bounding box and there you go. Or if you don't want to see the poly wire right now, I can just take in the car and if you feel like if you do a preview of it and it feels a little like jerky, like you can see, like it's, it's a little wavy or shaky in places, just increase the sphere, uh, you know, segments. So just take the frequency, get it up to like a hundred. Okay. So the more frequency you have, the smoother the animation gets, but then it also takes a little longer to calculate okay. because the divide needs to remove all the middle, uh, faces. So that takes a little bit of, you know, computation time. But yeah, this is essentially it. Like it's not, you know, the most complicated thing and it works on pretty much anything, you know, like if you want to do it on this, it works on this as well. Okay. Now, um, because I like money, <laughs> I'm trying something a little different this time, which is, uh, I made an additional file, which has a few more examples of this and that will be available on Gumroad, uh, for $5. 
Okay, so if anyone is interested, I'll just show you what the file is. So I did a couple more examples, which are there in the file. So one of the things you can also do with this technique is you can also make uh, contour lines for terrains. Okay, whether you want it animated or static, like either ways is fine. Uh, plus I did a few more experiments with with the noise maps to give to give you like different results. So I'll just show you what the file is. So if you find it interesting enough, you can pick it up from there. Otherwise, like the basic effect is fairly simple. Like it doesn't take, you know, too much time. Okay, so, uh, so this, is the, this is the file that will be available on Gumroad. And it has a few options. So firstly, like there are a couple more options within the noise. So you get like, you can check out different variety of, you know, noise maps and see what results you get. So this is with like periodic noise and then this is with, you know, if you do something like whirly. Yeah, there you go. So you get like, you know, more variety. You can try out with almost the, don't let the lines get too dense. It doesn't, well, it gets too confusing then. And you can also blend between, like I tried a, I tried this, which is essentially like you're blending between smooth lines and, you know, wavy lines. So something like that, you know, so you can have like the lines kind of blend between. So this is, you know, this is one of the things within the file. And then you can also look at, uh, I did this, which is, I don't know how it will look because this wasn't what I was going for, but uh, I'm just trying the same thing in VDB. Okay, so you can actually use it, you know, so you can look at that setup as well. And then this is something which is quite useful is, uh, you can use it to generate contour lines. So none of this is too complicated. If you have a basic understanding of, uh, of Houdini, you should very easily be able to do it. So this is the actual geometry. Sorry, uh, hold on. It's a little scaled down. So let me just zoom out a bit. Yeah, this is, so this is the basic height field. And then you're kind of generating a contour map out of it. This is not animated. But you can animate it the same way. You just take the offset value and animate that. So yeah, so this is basically it. This is not the most complicated thing in the world, but uh, the effect is nice. Like it's something that, I, as I said, I've been wanting to solve for a very long time. And uh, yeah, if you find the file useful, you can pick it up from Gumroad. Otherwise, you know, you have the basic information. You can do it anyways. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions regarding this, or if you pick up the file and you have any specific issues regarding the file, you can message me on YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, whatever, you know, whatever is suitable to you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's basically it.